Guys, this fire-based build in Wolong Fallen Dynasty just annihilates regular enemies, bosses of all kinds, and just annihilates literally everyone. The damage output on this build is insane, and as you can see, you can stun lock and just absolutely delete an opponent's spirit meter into oblivion by literally just hitting them a couple of times. All of the fire abilities in this build do insane massive damage to everybody and this is all footage from new game plus and you can see we top the damage floor here in the amount of damage we deal to enemies and almost cannot even be touched while doing so the martial arts and skill combo on this build is incredibly powerful and allows you to not only beat regular enemies and bosses but trios of bosses and much harder bosses we'll get right into this build but make sure you scroll down really quick and hit that subscribe button and like the video right now let's get right into this build so this build is primarily a fire build so you can see our fire virtue is 99 and our wood virtue is 47 this is going to give us the maximum amount of fire attack power and fire damage that we can possibly get as well as the wood virtue for extra health to make this build extra tanky and make it survive new game plus very easily. That being said, some of the things you'll notice with this build is because we have so much fire virtue, we have a 166% spirit gain rate, meaning we're gonna gain spirit a lot faster, almost two times as fast, as well as spirit consumption rate, meaning we can use our martial arts ability, which is super important for this build. So that way it will only be at 65% meaning we can use a lot more martial arts for a lot less of the actual spirit cost. As well, we have a proportion and agility here of a B, meaning we're using a mix between light and heavy armor to provide decent physical resistance here at 14%, but we still have B agility, so we have the ability to move around very quickly. And we also have 416 flame attack power and 177 wood attack power. So before we get to looking at any actual specific pieces of gear or anything, I'm going to show you the sets that I'm currently running. So the big part of this build is running the yellow heaven must rise set meaning this is the general of man armor set and what you want to do is have at least three of these items active currently so you get the first three set bonuses so this is going to be spirit gain from normal attack bonuses as well as spirit damage received and berserkers might so berserkers might upon deflection is the one you really want this means it's going to give us the ability every time we deflect an attack from an enemy and that will increase our damage dealt to the enemy, but also increase damage taken from enemy. So it sort of works like amplify damage, meaning if we deflect a hit from an enemy, we're going to get Berserker's Might and do a lot more damage to them. So I'm running three pieces of the General of Man armor, meaning I'm running the actual armor itself, the gauntlets, and the greaves. This is going to give me that three set bonus. And you can see while using all three of the General of Man pieces here for the set, I qualify for the bonus because I'm also using a weapon that has a set bonus requirement mitigation effect, meaning it's going to negate one of those set bonus requirements that we have for our set. So we automatically have four pieces with that bonus and we qualify for Berserker's Might. And this is good because this allows us to only use three pieces of the armor set. And in turn, it allows us to use a secondary effect. Yes, a secondary effect. So we have two armor set abilities on this build. So if you look at our helmet, our helmet actually gives us the Grace of Ling Bao set bonus, meaning if we go over to it with the helmet and the set bonus requirement mitigation weapon that I currently have, and keep in mind you can't stack these abilities. You can only have one on your person that actually counts. We're then going to qualify for the first bonus for the Grace of Ling Bao set, meaning we get Spirit Vulnerability on Enemy Upon Martial Arts. What you can do is also use a secondary weapon here and put a weapon that actually has the Grace of Ling Bao set bonus on it, meaning that way if you have the set bonus requirement mitigation on a weapon like I do, you actually qualify for the second bonus as well, meaning Power Drop on Enemy Upon Wizardry Spell. So those are the sets I'm running, the General of Man set up until Berserker's Might, and the Ling Bao set up until the first or second ability, depending on your build. For our weapon, I'm currently using the Dual Marquee Halberds. Now, this is a great weapon to use, meaning we're going to have a decent amount of attack power that we're going to be dishing out to enemies. Keep in mind, I actually don't even have this to rank 9, but once you upgrade it to rank 9, it's going to do up in the 620 or 30 range for attack power. Now, this weapon is a huge part of this build, primarily for one reason, and that is going to be the Beckoning Pine ability. The Beckoning Pine special effect is a type of special effect that actually will only spawn on certain weapons such as the dual marquee halberds and it kind of spawns randomly 
So what I did was I just farmed long enough and eventually got this and it had the ability on it. If you farm these on the five star farm that I have linked in the description and just wait over time or just play the game, you'll naturally come across a dual marquee halberd set or another set that has beckoning pine on it. This makes this build so much more OP than anything. This makes this build so much more OP in my opinion, even better than the gooting blade. And the Beckoning Pine ability allows us to spam our Martial Arts ability, which due to us having points in fire means we can use double the amount of Martial Arts since it doesn't cost a lot of spirit to use. And in the intro to the video, you see me just spamming it and people not being able to move and me stun locking them. That's because I use Beckoning Pine to just destroy enemy spirit meters almost completely. And you can see we have flame attack power on this weapon, slow on enemy upon martial arts. You want as many upon martial arts abilities as you can get with this build, as well as abilities upon deflecting. But you want to make sure you have a special effect item like this on every single weapon or piece of armor that you can possibly put it on. So you can get as many debuffs on enemies as possible. Next we have damage dealt. Overall I like this better than all the other damage abilities, primarily because it deals damage overall, whether it's spells, melee, anything giving us the most damage dealt over everything as a whole. The secondary weapon is the Sky Piercing Halberd. Again, this weapon scales with fire, which is great. And on it, we have flame attack power and damage dealt. Again, you want to make sure you have flame attack power for this build on every single item we go over. For your crossbow, only one of these items matters because it's the one you currently have out on your build. So on this crossbow, I put flame attack power, enemy status effect accumulation, and power gain upon ranged attack. For our armor, most of these pieces of armor already come with set bonuses affixed to them. But for right now, I have spirit gain upon deflecting. If you have a four or five star item, you want to put some sort of spirit gain effect on your item if you can. This way it's going to help us mow through enemy spirit meters that much faster. Again, we have damage reduction upon wizardry spell. You want to put these again kind of effects on any piece you can. Flame attack power and negative effect duration on enemies. For our general of man armor piece, we have damage dealt. We have spirit gain again from normal attacks, meaning we do a lot more spirit damage. Minus spirit damage received when attacking, flame attack power again, and burns accumulation on enemies so we can stack that accumulation on them as we do spells. For the gauntlet, flame attack power, positive effect duration, and overall damage dealt. And for the greaves, we have spirit gain from normal attacks, flame attack power, and damage dealt. So obviously you want to put damage dealt, flame attack power, and some sort of spirit gain effect on every piece that you can. And every piece that you can, besides that, you want to make sure you have an actual special effect, such as the damage reduction or power drop, or damage amplification, etc. And with the mix of light armor from the General of Man set, having the heavy armor helm here gives us that much extra physical resistance, meaning we're a little bit more tankier. And with our wood virtue at 47, this is actually going to put our HP at 885, meaning most every enemy in this game, for the most part in New Game Plus, isn't going to be able to one-shot you with the exception of maybe one or two. And for our accessories, we just have something that gives us flame attack power here. And then for this one, I just decided to use this because the equipment drop rate is an A-. minus. For our skills, you're going to be using Engulfing Inferno. This is great to use before and after Fatal Strikes. Meaning once you hit an enemy and break their spirit meter, you can then do a Fatal Strike on them. You can usually use two of these Engulfing Infernos on top of them. And then hit the enemy with the Fatal Strike. So you'll do the damage from the Fatal Strike and two of these engulfing infernos, which is typically a lot of damage. You can then just walk back to them while they're standing back up and cast two or three more engulfing infernos in a row, meaning you can get off about four or five of these before and after every single time you do a fatal strike, almost doubling and sometimes tripling your damage that you can do. Amplify damage, we're going to be using this on big boss fights so we can amplify our damage. You can swap this out for a skill of your choosing, but this is a high risk, high reward skill. Meaning, if you're pretty confident you can run through a boss, put this on combined with Berserker's Might, you're going to be doing a bunch of extra damage this way. We're also going to be using lightning weapons so that way we can apply lightning damage to the enemy. Since most enemies have problems with shock damage already. And this will allow us to put the shock debuff onto the enemy, increasing our damage output. And finally, Bursting Fireball. This might be questionably the best spell in the entire game across every single build. This is because it allows you to stand back from a distance and cast this consecutively at enemies, stunning most enemies that you hit this with and being able to do constant damage and sometimes knock off large chunks of health from the enemy just by throwing this at them over and over and over again, providing you almost never get hit. And for our Divine Beast, it doesn't totally matter which one you pick, 
but for now, I went with this one. It gives us extra martial arts damage, as well as a small amount of martial arts spirit consumption reduction, which is great because that's a primary part of this build, as well as negative effect duration and slow on enemy upon martial arts. So this is just going to add to our insane martial arts ability that's honestly, like I mentioned, better than the Gooning Blade in my personal opinion. Now one of the primary things we want to make sure with this build is using our martial arts ability or using Beckoning Pine as I have in the intro and other builds. You can see using Beckoning Pine on enemies and bosses you can just spam this on enemies and just destroy their spirit meter and get an almost infinite amount of instant fatal strikes on enemies within just a few seconds. And being that this is a fire build, this means we can cast double the amount almost of martial arts abilities, meaning you can just spam enemies with this and just go ham on every enemy, even these bigger bosses and mini bosses to just knock down their spirit meter entirely and in one, two or three hits, get a fatal strike on them and just end them right there. As we combine this ability with our spell abilities for doing a massive amount of fire damage, meaning if you get an enemy to a fatal strike, you can use Burning Inferno before and after you do the fatal strike multiple times, allowing you to maximize and do two or three times the damage of a regular fatal strike, which is insane. You can see through a lot of these bosses in New Game Plus, where I do 1000 to 2000 damage on every single fatal strike or massive hit. This allows us to combo all of our abilities, especially our martial arts spam with this build and just constantly hit enemies, whether there's one, two, three, four, five, or six, you're gonna hit them all with this martial arts ability and it's very widespread, meaning once you attack one enemy with this, if there's other enemies in the radius, you're gonna hit them all and the insane amount of martial arts damage that you do to an enemy spirit meter with this just destroys them and makes it to where you can do a fatal strike on them in two, three, sometimes maybe four hits. But even if it takes four hits, you can do all four hits in a row because you essentially stun lock the enemy out of existence where they can't even attack you. You can see here, you literally sidestep every other enemy and dodge every other enemy's attack automatically while performing this martial art, meaning it's almost impossible to hit you and you're just wailing on every single enemy that you come across, giving you infinite, like I said, fatal strikes. That being said, if you have any ideas that would make this build better, leave me a suggestion in the comments. And guys, like the video if you haven't already, and scroll down right now and subscribe, because 95% of you aren't even subscribed. That being said, check out this long video on the right if you're interested. Thanks.